Distance Learning Diary, day 25. So I want to jump right into this. Uh, teachers have been using video to instruct their students um, or live lessons to instruct their students. I have an example of my own that I'd like to show you guys uh, from today um, that I'm going to get right into, as well as some uh, two examples from two middle school teachers, um, Michelle Sacco and Georgina Calvi. Um, a science and math teacher respectively and how they use the traditional approach to recording some stuff on their, their phones or propping up a camera uh, and putting in some information um, to teach their students a particular concept. So I want you to see how they're using video. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to uh, show you some examples of some exemplar lessons using screencasting and screencastify uh, to show students how to do particular concepts. So the first thing I want to show you is don't forget to use your resources. Uh, in Woodbridge Township, uh, I reached out to our mayor, Mayor John McCormick, and I asked him to uh, take part in a discussion today with my uh, with my civics classes. And he was gracious enough to spend some time this morning um, talking to students about what it's like to uh, to be mayor of Woodbridge Township. So I want to give you a little snippet of that and show you how we can use um, a live Zoom call to instruct other people um, or to give our students learning about a particular concept. And then we're gonna go into the uh, lesson from uh, Michelle Sacco regarding uh, genetics and Punnett squares, and then Georgina Calvi's math lesson. So I'll be back to talk to you guys at the end. Enjoy these clips. Yeah, was, what's the most difficult part of your job? Um, the most difficult part is when, when there's somebody needs help and I'm not able to help them. Like if it's another government, maybe it's the federal government or the state government or the county that has to help them. And I can't because it's not it's not within the Woodbridge Township government's you know uh, purview. That's hard. But I always try to get people to the right place to somebody that can help them. But there's a lot of like people right now are asking me about their stimulus checks and how to and about collecting unemployment. Well, the unemployment is handled by the state, and the stimulus checks are handled by the federal government. So there's really not much I can do with those things. Um, other than getting the right name and the right phone number and referring the people to where they can get the help. Um, so the question was that if you are given money to improve one part of your um, city, which part would it be and why? You mean related to the virus? No, any part. Oh, any part? Any part. One um, part. Gee, that's a good question. Probably the roads because everybody sees them, everybody uses them, everybody pays attention to them. And when they're bad, people get very mad. Mm -hmm. Like I would say something like a sewer, you know, that's important too. The sanitary sewers, the storm sewers, they're all important, but you could spend a lot of money on them and people would never even notice. Um, so I would say if we got, suddenly somebody gave us $5 million and said, do whatever you want with it, I'd probably pave a whole lot, lot of roads. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Very good. Hi guys, so I made one more video for you because I wanted to show you um, how to make a Punnett square using brown eyes and blue eyed parents. Okay, so for a brown eyed parent, so brown is going to be dominant and we'll use a capital B for dominant and B and then blue eyes is recessive so we'll use lowercase b. And we're going to cross two parents that are capital B, lowercase b, capital B, capital B. So our two parents, one parent would be homozygous dominant and the other one would be a heterozygous parent, okay? And they're both brown. So if we come over here, this is how we create the square. Um, we have our one parent on top over there, it's the capital B, lowercase b. And then the other parent we put on the side, which is uppercase, uppercase. So this is a homozygous dominant parent and a heterozygous parent. So in our first offspring box, which is right here, we're going to move the capital B to here and drop down the other capital B. And you have a homozygous dominant offspring. And then on the bottom box, move this over here and drop this down here. 
and you have another homozygous dominant in the box, which would be indicate brown eyes for an offspring and another brown eyed for an offspring. And then we come over here, you bring that capital B over and drop this lowercase b down and you have a hybrid, which remember the capital B covers up or masks the lowercase b, which is the blue eyes. So this offspring will still have brown eyes as well as this offspring because we brought the B over and dropped it down. So all our offspring would have brown eyes here. Hi class, it's Mrs. Calvi here. I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on rotations because that is um, one of the hardest transformations to get a grasp of. Now I have my figure plotted on my coordinate plane. If you notice, it is in quadrant three. Just a couple um, items of review. Quadrant one leads to quadrant two, which leads to quadrant three, and then quadrant four. Don't forget, any point that lands in quadrant one will be positive, positive. Any point that lands in quadrant two will be negative, positive. Any point that lands in quadrant three will be negative, negative and any point that lands in quadrant four will be positive negative. So if you see, I have my figure plotted or graphed in quadrant three. Now, if we do a 90 degree rotation, that would be one turn. If we do a 180 degree rotation, that would be two turns. And if we do a 270 degree rotation, that would be three turns. So whether it be using a Zoom meeting and having a special guest or going outside with sidewalk chalk and writing things on your driveway or finding a traditional way, you know, working on a little, you know, whiteboard-ish, uh, you know, writable screen to be able to do um, plotting coordinates, teachers are finding innovative ways to teach their students. And I know some of you are thinking, well, that's not the most innovative thing. But for those teachers, maybe it is. So we need to keep that in mind when we are critiquing other teachers lessons when we're when we're sharing out resources um you know that sometimes uh teachers are focusing on their um traditional methods the only suggestion i would give those two teachers about their videos uh, actually there'd be two number one keep doing them and number two um definitely show your face teachers want to see um that their uh their, their students want to see their teachers faces so I think that's important for, for everybody to remember. Um, so, you know, don't forget as you're continuing to, to go through this process, uh, share your successes, share your failures, ask for feedback, um, and also, you know, use those lessons that you're, you're uh, putting together as part of your best practices. And I applaud and thank those teachers that shared those videos examples with me. Uh, I think that was a really great uh, short example. Uh, more tomorrow, I'll show you guys some screencasting along with some other ways that people are using uh, video to instruct their students. And then Thursday and Friday, I have two additional things that I want to show you guys, which I'm very excited about. So um, this one was a little long today, but I hope you enjoyed it and took something from it in regards to um, the messages that, that come from it and how you can use video, whether it be your phone or your iPad propped up, um, you know, to, to reach your students at a whole, uh, at, at a different level. Okay, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel if you have not done so already. I'd really appreciate it. And thanks again to those teachers who've been sharing videos with me. Uh, I look forward to giving you some more examples tomorrow. Have a great day.